All right, so uh, we need to go back to what we were talking about before. We were talking about the uh, power map of Louisville and the tactics that occupied need to utilize in order to be successful. Now, these are all just hypothetical. None of these are going into effect. I'm just thinking about how the revolution should go down. So I think that there should be a codified, the democratic stack procedure should be codified, consensus should be codified in the constitution amongst occupiers. Um, the power of working groups would have to be explained an overview of the democratic system at the beginning of every meeting, so that way everybody understands that you have uh, certain rights and freedoms when you come to these meetings. Every person is a citizen and everything and every word that you say matters. Um, I also think that we should have one big GA meeting to, before they're having GA meetings like every fucking day at noon, every fucking day is a GA meeting. Uh, but I think if you had one major GA meeting every week for major decisions, then that would be um, that that would be the GA that everybody would come to work on the big decisions. If there's just more housekeeping things, maybe you could meet up for something like that. Or leadership, I think we should actually vote on some leadership. Um, we should have there's working groups, and I like the idea of the working groups that you can kind of create this entity where a group, a small group of people get together and they work on these things. Um, but I think there's some groups that can be codified too. It can be institutionalized. Always having some sort of executive board. I think every leader has its movements or has its leaders. Every movement has its leaders. Every organization has its leaders and its people. It's a decentralized movement and we're using democratic consensus-based decision-making. So as long as we stick to the process of democracy, then our decisions will be okay. I, we can vote for a leadership. We can vote for an agenda. Then we can vote to endorse people, and we can vote to have direct action campaigns. So, um, I, uh, some of the things I think, like in the Watts riots in California, the Watts riots, they had the National Guard come in to keep the police from beating all uh, the rioters up. So, from the zoot suitors, from the naval attacks, it was the Navy versus the zoot suitors. The fucking Navy is going to attack the zoot suitors in the Watts riots. There's also the National Guard who came out to protect the Little Rock Nine and the civil rights protesters. Considering getting the National Guard as a check for the Louisville Metro Police Department is not a bad idea. Just have them on the phone. If we call, it's just like anything else, domestic dispute. If you're the first one that calls the police, you're the one that's listened to first. You got the upper hand. So that if we are the ones that call the National Guard in and say, hey, we just want to make sure it doesn't get out of hand like it did last week, then I think that we would have a greater justification and they would realize that there's two sides to the to the rioting. It's not just the people, but it's also the bloodthirsty, sadistic, psychopathic police officers who's 75% white male. Uh, they also have something we don't have, and that's guns. they got lots of ammunition, lots of guns, lots of weapons and bully clubs and... Uh, so, uh, some event planning. I think event would be good. Uh, one event I think would be awesome would be a day of rage. And day of rage is where everybody would get out in the streets. And I think you know, I had it for November 5th, the Facebook group. We're going to have an election this November. There's always going to be elections. So, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to have the entire November, week of November, the first week of November, to be a day of rage where everybody's just taking the streets and we're peacefully getting along with each other and we're showing that we can get along. And we can work amongst ourselves different issues and problems. We get list uh, speakers to speak. We can get musicians. We can get Rage Against the Machine, Rebel Diaz, Immortal Technique. Uh, we can get uh, a lot of ro local rappers who rap really well. They can do some battles. We can do something like that, have a hip-hop event. We can do big things. If we could dream it, we could do it. And if we got a committed group of people, we can get so much shit accomplished. So, um, emergency plan for an inevitable Louisville Metro police crackdown. So, this is something I come up with last year, and it's very relevant right now. I had an emergency plan for the inevitable Louisville Metro police crackdown. So, we're going to have protests. We're going to be getting inside uh, the tents. What will happen when the police actually invade the tents? What will happen when the police uh, start a riot? What happens if a riot is started? What happens if something is blown out of proportion? There's gunshots, fucking gunshots in the West End. We all saw it in the videotape. Fucking another one girl killed another motherfucking girl. Just straight up right there when the police were already there on the scene. So what happens when, you know, that if that, that could have got out of control, that could have been the catalyst for something bigger. And um, 
that's why I think it's plan. It's a good idea to have a plan in place for any crisis that we might encounter. What if Wall Street collapses? What if we have another great recession? You know, what if there are riots out on the street? What will we do to curb that violence? Because we don't want the violence to get out there. We want a peaceful, prolonged revolution. If you're going to be violent, then you can't you can't join us. Um, you might have to like knock over a trash can or something, something small to get the immediate attention. You might have to break one window, but you do it quietly and you do it off to the side. You don't let anybody know about it. And if anybody asks you, it's Section 4 of the Kentucky Constitution. You're defended in your justification for that window that you broke. Okay, so, like, have a plan, plan in place for when the police state comes crashing on Occupy Louisville. Uh, Oakland, there is a police crackdown all over Anaheim right now. If it's not happening by November, December, it could happen January 1st when the permit has to be renewed or rejected. And I was there on the 1st, and there was no Mayor Fisher in the 2nd. So occupying several public spaces would give us more mobility. We actually got a home base now, and that's that's the, the best thing that we could have, a home base. That should, uh, the center of the revolution should be right there, and all liberal groups should have a uh, foot in the door of Occupy. Because no social movements ever were successful without a revolution. All these social movements, they're just, you're just throwing your dick against the wall, <laughs> you know, that's not actually going to do anything with the social movements unless you have a revolution. With the revolution, you can wave, ride the crest of the wave and get, uh, draw exactly the equitable society that you dream of. You should be allowed to eat at Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A people, fuck you, Chick-fil-A people, you fucking homophobic assholes. So... Uh, occupying several spaces would be a good idea. The, uh, we need more money, more people, more direct action campaigns. I think having a leadership and an agenda, one that makes Occupy Louisville a unique event here, to work with other like-minded folks on the campaign that will at least unite a coalition designed for many occupations and social movements, winning one campaign after the next. Ten-point plan, ten-point plan of action, having a breakfast program, abolishing poverty, homelessness, freedom from hunger and cold, food bank donations, keeping many homeless alive, working on just a homeless program. Let's fix homelessness. If Occupy can fix homelessness, that's an institutional change that we could all uh, celebrate and pat ourselves on the back for for years to come. Roger Bybee, Labor Must Play Its Wild Card article in Z Magazine, of more coalition building with labor unions. We also need that. Said that the labor movement, which is in general, has solidarity with the Occupy Wall Street movement. Labor is for Occupy Wall Street. Uh, some labor around here is for the local Occupy Louisville. I heard the fire department was for Occupy Louisville. So you got the uh, long-term investment of resources in creating a strong national media apparatus while the right has utilized talk radio, Fox News, Wall Street Journal, various Murdoch papers, and a more significant presence on the Internet. The media resources of progressives and labor fall far short of the right-wing uh, media machine. That's so true. Oh, my God, the lady, the, the left has got to get their own media. Why not start our own version of Fox News program here? That's why it's frustrating to watch Colbert because he's celebrating and he's uh, uh, kind of making Colbert or kind of making uh, Bill O'Reilly seem just like an untouchable, like, huge person that you cannot beat instead of uh, having an over-the-top conservative person who's sarcastic. You can do the same thing with the liberal. Why can't you have an over-the-top liberal person who's, you know, can be sarcastic at times. It seems like your sarcasm always leans towards the conservative realm, and I think that's telling on you. Uh, you have a higher liberal audience, and I think that you're more liberal, and you've also uh, entered into politics, whereas John Stewart has not, so I give you credit for that, but it just, it bothers me a little bit. I think we could have a loudmouth liberal hero. We could have a loudmouth liberal hero who, you know, it, it could be over the top and sarcastic, but very real. And actually, like, I mean, what's the difference between you and Glenn Beck? What are the difference between some of you people? I mean, like, they're rodeo clowns, and they know that they're putting on this performance. So Glenn Beck crying and carrying on about this and that. He don't know if it, if he's faking anymore or if it's the real thing. I mean, that's like, oh, that's such great theater. It's incredible. And the people need theater like that. They need to be fed on a day-to-day basis. Uh, the public is like a baby, and they need some sort of rattle or some sort of bright colors which to focus on and to look at. Because if they don't see that to look at, then they'll forget. Very forgetful public. They don't remember one year to the next. Bad long-term retention of ideas. Uh, plus, there's no education, no civics, and they overall just don't give a shit. So, 
Uh, Long-term investment resources create a strong national media apparatus. We need a left-wing media. We need a, a biased media that actually speaks up for the people. All we got is corporate media around here. We only got one daily, and only one kind of activist-y kind of uh, alternative. We got Louisville Weekly and um, Kerr Journal, but man, there's, that's limited. That's so limited. We're in the uh, information age. We're in the internet age. Why don't we have a website where people can go? and post all their videos and information on why don't we have like a people's democratic website why don't we have a, a place a central location where we could all go and submit our information and of course it, uh, somebody will need to uh, regulate it so we'll have an internet regulator a media regulator and it's not to regulate the news but it's to regulate the bullshit you know no fucking porn and no fucking filibuster bullshit um, but just actual news and information and 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 let that be the the, mo the information we put out. We're telling each other what's going on instead of allowing somebody else to tell us what's going on. That's revolutionary. We also have a website where we vote directly on the issues, direct democracy, not just voting for the, the candidates. So, um, the uh, Roger Bybee article in Z Magazine, Labor Must Play Its Wild Card. So, Roger Bybee says that we should support, have a support for economic bill of rights to frame progressive activism. A crucial dimension of labor resurgence is framing labor struggles in moral terms. So labor struggle is in moral terms. A fight for the working class is the right thing, the good thing, the uh, decent thing to do. Fighting against working class is wicked, and it's what barbarians act like. You're against working class? Fuck you. You don't want to be for working class? Go fuck yourself, you piece of shit. You ain't for working class people? You're not for the 99%? You don't, you're hating your fucking self, for one. And we don't like any, or I don't like anybody that don't like me. You don't like me? Go fuck yourself. So a crucial dimension of our labor resurgence is framing labor struggles in moral terms. FDR, one means to spread the notion of economic rights for workers may lie in reviving the economic bill of rights. FDR had an economic bill of rights, which is outlined by Franklin Delano Roosevelt in his January 1944 State of the Union speech, in which he proposed a second bill of rights that would guarantee all Americans basic economic rights. One of the rights Roosevelt suggested was economic from economic insecurity, and that's particularly important right now with the economic disparity that Occupy is pointing out. A declaration of the national economic emergency um, affecting all Americans outside the ranks of the very richest. So we need there's an economic emergency plan we need to kick into gear. Promotion of a national moratorium on plant closings and offshoring of jobs. So no more um, outsourcing. And no more plant closings. All factories must stay alive and working and operating by any means necessary. The corporation wants to pull out, then the workers get to control of that building and those operations and those machines, and they get to figure out where those things are going to be sold, what they're going to be making, and they'll organize themselves. Day of Rage, Operation, hashtag Louisville Day of Rage, a.k.a. fuck the election up with a massive turnout, a.k.a. show the political apparatus that we have power. A massive turnout. If we would have voted for Gatewood, if we vote for Jill Stein, if we vote for any of these uh, independent candidates, we will show something in the election. We will show something. Get 10% for Jill, Jill Stein. Write in your name. Write in Mickey Mouse. Write in um, um, Howard Zinn. There we go. We're going to have a Howard Zinn write in campaign. Okay? Louisville, if you don't know the person who they are, write in Howard Zinn. And for every one of the candidates, every one of their spots. And then we'll see how many people was actually uh, voted for a dead. A radical progressive, a revolutionary. He wrote the people's history of the United States. Howard Zinn. Howard Zinn is uh, is um, is awesome. He's uh, his name will be solidified in American history forever, as long as Occupy succeeds. And Occupy Louisville has got to succeed. The Occupy Louisville movement has a moment when it can make significant change. And that moment that I was talking about was last year. We had a moment to make significant change in the governor's election, so we didn't actually go for the governor's election, but we have a moment now, and we'll have a moment in another time, and another time. Every election will have a moment to get significant change, to show the power apparatus that we have real political power. We've got support, and achieving respect is important. National recognition is being shown to Edinburgh. Edinburgh, Occupy Edinburgh, has national recognition for the entire Occupy movement, and L.A. says that they have informal support for the Occupy uh, LA. So how come Louisville here, they're fucking treating us like a bunch of dickheads. They're pushing us off the fucking lawns. They're treating us like a bunch of assholes. They're not embracing the 99%. They're not saying we're citizens. They don't give a shit about our views. They don't care about that we care about student education and rights and racism and 
the uh, abuses of capitalism and the depression and the homeless and the economic inequality and the prison rates and the toothlessness and the meth faces and the poor people and the violence and the police brutality. You don't think we give a shit about all that stuff? You don't think all that shit matters? You think it's a good idea to ignore somebody that gives a fuck about all those things? You think it's a good idea? Is it a good idea to ignore those things? Come on, Mayor Fisher, Metro Council, we can do better. Occupy Louisville. We are change. Working Families Party.